Good morning, Year 3, and today, this week in reading, we are going to be focusing on vocabulary words. We're moving on to the next part of the book, and we're going to be focusing on pages 30 to 37. So I'm going to share my screen now so that we can go through our vocabulary words. Make sure you're looking at the small picture of me to see the actions that you're going to be doing for your vocabulary words, because those actions will help you to memorise the words. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. Let's go on to our vocabulary words. OK, fantastic. So let's make this full screen. As you know, we are looking at Bill's new frock. That is the text that we are studying by Anne Fine. The first word that I have for you, OK, describes when something is done in a clever and sneaky way. The picture you can see of Fox is being very clever and sneaky. OK, they've taken a coin from the mole that is digging. How, what adjective would I use to describe this fox? And then the actual word has been turned into an adverb. So pause the video, have a think. What do you think the word is? Okay, hopefully you've had some time to think about that. The word is cunningly. And for the action I'm going to do for cunningly, because when you do something very cunningly, you're doing it very sneakily and it's quite clever. You're being quite sly. So I'm going to do this action for cunning, cunningly, cunningly. OK, moving on. When you push something or someone roughly, you're giving them a big. And you can see the man here has been very, very rude. He's pushing both the woman and another smaller man very roughly. And aggressively, I would say, oh, that man, me. Pause the video now and try and guess what that word is. Okay, hopefully you've had some time to think about what the word is. The word was shoving, shoving. And this is the action we're going to do. We're actually going to pretend we're shoving somebody, shoving. The next word means when you grasp tightly onto something. Okay, maybe if you've been on a bus before and you see people doing this on a on the poles to help them stay upright, I would say they're mm, the pole. Same if, as if, if I had, um, I'm trying to see if I've got my bag. If I had my bag and I was walking through a very busy street, I would be mm, my bag to make sure that nobody takes it. Okay, what do you think this word is? Pause the video and have a guess. Okay, the word was clutching and we're going to do this for clutching okay clutching and it looks like i'm clutching my bag or you can do this for clutching the pole clutching is when you grasp something very tightly you hold on to something very tightly this feeling is when you feel very strong disapproval usually that's something nasty okay sometimes this is a feeling you have maybe you've seen something that's disgusting and it's really put you off your food um you can also use this word as an adjective to describe something that's very nasty. I nearly said the word there. Be careful not to. What do you think this word is? When you taste something, it tastes very nasty, it's revolting. You might say, oh, that is. And the feeling would be uh, that word shortened. So pause the video. What do you think the word is? The word is disgust. Disgust. And we can do that for disgust. Disgust. We can do that for disgust, and that shows that we're feeling a very strong, disapproving feeling of disgust. We're not approving of that. We don't like it. This word, okay, describes this type of transport. Not this one in particular, because it can also include cars, aeroplanes, boats. These are all a type of something, and that something can be used to transport people or goods. So think about buses, cars, lorries coaches, trains, boats, aeroplanes, helicopters, are all types of, mm, this is a noun. Try and think of what the word is. Pause the video and have a think. Okay, the word was vehicles. Okay, and this is our last word. We've got a very cute picture of a lovely dog, the King Charles Spaniel, and it's looking at something steadily or intently. It's into their eyes. So when you're looking at something or someone steadily and intently, I would say you are mm, 
This word can also be used to describe lots of people go and do this with the stars. They go star. Mm. OK, pause the video to see if you can figure out what the word is. The word was gazed. OK, gazed or gazing, stargazing. Lots of people go stargazing to look at the stars. So gazing is when you look at something or someone intently, usually in their eyes. OK, so what we are going to do now, we are going to continue reading on the chapter. We have got up to page 29 and we're now going to be continuing on from page 30 to 37. That is the part of the text that we are going to focus on this week. What I'm going to do, I'm going to follow the text with my laser point so that you can follow it on at home with it. If you would like to, you can print off the text so that you can have that in an actual copy to read off of. Otherwise, follow along with my laser point on the screen. When I say join in and read along with me, make sure you're joining in. When I say it's my turn, it's my turn. Or if you would like, you can just pause the whole video or mute the whole video and you can read the text completely by yourself. What's that then? asked Bill. Where's the girls bit? Where are the girls supposed to play? I don't know, Martin answered irritably. Anywhere. Just somewhere we're not already playing football. But you're playing football all over every single bit of the playground. Martin glanced up at the clock on the church tower next door to the school. There were only two minutes left before the bell rang and his team was down by one tiny goal. Join in with me for this next bit. He spread his hands in desperation. Please give back the ball. Sorry, please give the ball back, he pleaded. What's it worth? For the life of him, Bill Simpson couldn't understand why, if Martin wanted the ball back so badly, he couldn't just step forward and try to prise it away from his chest. Then he realised that Martin simply didn't dare. The two of them might end up in a bit of a shoving. Well done, that's one of our words, shoving. If you do spot any more words, say it out loud. Match, and then a real fight. And no one fights since someone in a pretty pink frock with fiddly shell buttons. So he said, cunningly, it's one of our, our vocabulary words, I'll tell you what it's worth. It's worth your very last wumpy chew. What do you think a wumpy chew is? A wumpy chew. Look at the picture to help you. To his astonishment, that was one of our words from last week, Martin looked delighted. Done, he said at once and began digging deep into his trouser pocket. OK, I'm going to continue reading this next bit. He handed a tiny wrap, wrapper rectangle over to Bill. There you are, he said. Here it is. Now give me the football and get off the pitch. Bill Simpson looked down. What's this, he asked. It's what you wanted, Martin said. My very last one, P2. In silence, Bill Simpson handed over the football where he'd been clutching it tightly against his chest. There was now an enormous brown smudge. I wonder what that smudge was. Why do you think there was a brown smudge on his chest? In silence, Bill Simpson turned and walked away. If the girls had not been standing around the edges of the playground watching him, he would have cried. Chapter three. Pink, pink, nothing but pink. Join in with me for this next bit. After break, it was art. Everyone helped to unfold the large plastic sheets and lay them over the tabletops and spread old newspapers over them. Then Mrs. Collins sent Layla into the dark cupboard at the back of the classroom to see what was left in the art supplies box. Are there any chalks left? No, they're all gone. Pastels then. We're turning over to page 34. They're still too damp to use after the roof leak. What about the clay? It's all dried up. There must be crayons. Every class has crayons. Join in with me for this next bit. The infants came and borrowed ours last week and haven't brought them back yet. Right then, it will just have to be paint as usual. So Layla dragged the heavy cardboard box full of paint tubs out of the cupboard and everyone crowded round to choose their colours. Here's a pink. What's that one? Pink? More pink? Pink? I found some blue. Oh, no, I haven't. It's empty. OK, I'm going to continue reading this next bit. I thought I'd found some green, but it's dried up. There's no white. There's never any white. We haven't had white for years and years. Well, there's some pink here. And this one's pink. 
Pink, pink, nothing but pink. I guess that's why the chapter is called Pink, Pink, Nothing But Pink, because all the paints seem to be pink. Everyone stood up disappointed. Kirsty voiced everyone's disgust. Well done, disgust. She was not very pleased with it. Do you want to join in with this bit? What can you do with pink? She demanded. You can't paint pink dogs or pink cats or pink cows or pink grass or pink space vehicles or well done vehicles or pink trees or pink battlefields, can you? If only you can find one colour, it's difficult enough. But if you only got pink, it's practically impossible. What is there in the world that's all pink? Okay, my turn. Yes, what's all pink? What is all pink? Who do you think is wearing all pink? Everyone gazed around the room, looking for someone that was dressed in all pink so that they could paint it. Some of them stared at pictures and posters pinned on the classroom walls. Who do you think they're going to find dressed in all pink? Have a think. Others gazed out of the window across the playground to the street and the shops. One or two of them glanced at one another. All together, read along with me at home. And Kirsty looked at Bill. No, Bill said, no, 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 not me. Absolutely not, you can't. Now everyone turned to look at Bill. No. Bill insisted. I am not all pink. Now Mrs Collins too was inspecting Bill closely. And that is all for today. So your independent task, okay, is to match up the words to their correct definition. We have gone through our vocabulary words, shoving, cunningly, clutching, or this action, disgust, Vehicles, which we can use vehicles, we can do moving objects, moving transports, and gaze when you stare deeply into at something or at someone. Your independent task is to now match up the correct def, uh, the correct vocabulary words with their definitions. Okay. Oh, so pause the video now so that you can do that. Fantastic. By now, you should have. Completed the task, here are the answers. Don't forget to upload your work onto Seesaw so that your teachers can see. Bye.